grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Bless the Lord who forgives our sins. And mercy and mercy. Almighty God, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may meditate on it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, who in this holy mystery gives us a pledge of eternal life and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month, shall mark for you the beginning of the month. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth month of this month they are to take a lamp for each family, a lamp for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamp, each shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamp shall be divided in portion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year or more. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two door posts and the lintel of the household in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire without even bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire, which is heads with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything, rema anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no place shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he had tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, 
I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Would you pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. We don't always understand the significance of something we're living through until much later. When we entered Lent in 2020, we didn't know that we were living in the before times, but now our world is different. At the meal we describe as the Last Supper, the friends who gathered together in a borrowed upper room didn't know this would be their last meal before everything changed. There would be other meals with Jesus after, but not with these 12 disciples, and the world would be different. Monday Thursday is the only day of Holy Week that I would describe as cozy. In between the boisterous, palm-laden triumph of Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem and the trauma of his coming execution, Jesus takes some time to gather with just his closest circle. These are the ones that John says are his own, this chosen family that Jesus has spent the last years of his life pouring into. And what he offers as his last chance to teach his disciples is an example of tangible service and a mandate to love one another. During our quarantine time of separation, I would get my corporate worship and music fixed by watching a lot of episodes of Call the Midwife. Um, It's a TV show about a group of British nuns who worked with nurses to provide free medical care for people in their neighborhood. Their focus is on maternity care, but they help wherever they can. So in the 2012 Christmas special, we get to know a character named Mrs. Jenkins. Through a combination of poverty and personal struggles and societal neglect, this elderly woman is in need of hygiene and wound care that she's afraid to receive. But by the end of this episode, Nurse Jenny and Sister Evangeline were finally able to earn her trust and get her uh, to let them give her a bath. They brush out her matted hair and pour warm water over her aging body and bandage her sores. Playing over this beautiful and vulnerable scene is the haunting melody of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And we're reminded of the miracle of the bodily incarnation of God with us. So you picture a nativity scene the holy family in a star-lit animal pen surrounded by angels and shepherds and magi. Uh, But no such scene actually exists just like that in scripture. We pull the angel coming to Mary and Joseph and the magi following the star from Matthew's gospel. And then from Luke, we get the manger and reading into that, an innkeeper. Luke's gospel describes the angels bringing the good news to the shepherds who come to worship the newborn king. Each gospel adds something to our understanding of the significance of the birth of Emmanuel, God with us. And in their differences, they give us a fuller picture. 
In the same way, our vision of the Last Supper is pieced together from different gospel accounts, each giving some of the theological meaning of this precious time. Is this the Last Supper, or is this Last Supper the Passover, or is it the night before the Passover? Did the foot washing happen during the same meal? Is the bread that John describes as being shared with everyone the same bread that Matthew, Mark, and Luke record Jesus breaking and saying, take, eat? It's interesting, and we can study and compare and consider the audiences and how each detail is consistent with each author's intended message. We can make our tangible plans for how we will follow through on the mandate to love each other, to wash each other's feet, but that is not our task today. There's work to do in the days ahead, but today we can just imagine ourselves in the flickering firelight, gathered together and learning from Jesus while he's with us. Matthew, Mark, and Luke give us the words that we heard recorded in 1 Corinthians in which Jesus takes the bread and the wine and says, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for many. We witness Jesus giving this explanation so that the disciples will understand that Jesus' very body and blood were a gift from God. And through simple elements of this meal, his followers should remember him. John's description of this dinner includes bread and wine, but no words of remembrance there. Instead, John gives us a startlingly earthy and intimate act of foot washing. So there's a church I drive past every day uh, whose kiosk used to bear the, the phrase, in Christ you owe your flesh nothing. Now I get that this is a quote from Romans, and it refers to denying one's destructive impulses through the power that Christ gives us to reject evil. I don't know anything about this church's theology or what sermon series they were working through when they posted this message, but I wonder how it read to people who drove by and just caught that snippet. Really? Because of Christ, I owe my flesh nothing? What about food and water? Don't I owe my muscles some stretching and moving? Don't I owe my body respect as part of God's creation? And don't I owe other bodies that same respect? I believe that when Jesus said we should love others as we love ourselves, that love should extend to the very flesh we inhabit, even with tricked knees or needing a step stool behind the pulpit or whatever bodily quirks or more serious challenges we've got. We can't deny the importance of flesh when God Almighty takes on a human body too. I think of this story now because Jesus' last acts in this upper room were very flesh-focused. Jesus undressed and wrapped his body in a towel. He knelt down and physically scrubbed the weary feet of his companions. In the accompanying act associated with this evening, he compared their meal to his very own flesh and blood, reminding them of the gift to them from God that his own body represented. The body of Christ made a difference. Back to that cozy manger scene, the incarnation, the enfleshment of God on earth was part of our Savior's work. Jesus of Nazareth lived a very real flesh and blood life. In doing so, he experienced feasts and celebrations, family life, corporate worship, and travel. He also spent time as a refugee, was bullied as a child, and almost certainly got blisters and sunburns and stomach bugs and all the things that come with human life. 
in the intimacy of the upper room, Jesus could have used his last moments to get very spiritual and philosophical. He could have given a farewell discourse to rival Deuteronomy. And we do get some of that in the next several chapters of John. But before all of that, Jesus uses his time to wash his friend's feet and break bread. Although the disciples would not have been particularly disturbed by having their feet washed by a servant, having their Lord and teacher take on this servant's task was a reversal of their expectations. As John tends to do over and over, we see Jesus flipping the social order. I wonder what conversations were whispered between the disciples as each waited their turn to have this moment with their leader. The only reaction we have is from Peter, always the one eager to speak up. He says what I imagine they were all thinking, that this isn't Jesus' job, that it's a little embarrassing for him to do it. In fact, the disciples should be the ones serving their teacher, not the other way around. Jesus explained that the time would come that they should do this for each other. But in this moment, the teacher would set the example so that they would have a share in him. Not understanding, Peter then questioned, why stop at feet? Jesus, wash my hands and my head too. Later, he would understand. It wasn't about needing a bath. It was about the act of serving. Sometimes we need that example of Christ who serves humbly so that we too are encouraged to find ways to serve. Sometimes we need examples of each disciple having their feet washed to remind us that we are not earning our salvation here. Jesus has done that work. Professor Leonora Tubbs Tisdale reminds preachers that members of their congregation might be in either of these places, or they might not see themselves at the table at all because they're having a difficult time accepting Jesus' radical grace. She says to focus on who was at that table. The denier, the betrayer, the doubter, the sleepers, all shared bread and had their feet washed by Christ. No matter how we approach the table, we gather today to remember how it is Christ who invited us there. We don't need to already be clean and upright. Jesus brings the water and the towel. We don't need to be full and satisfied and successful. Jesus offers the bread and the wine. We don't need to understand it all. The disciples themselves didn't get it either. They didn't understand that this would be their last meal before everything changed, but later they would. They didn't understand their own capacity for failure, to betray Jesus to the authorities, to fall asleep when all he asked for was company while he prayed, to deny knowing him or to doubt his bodily resurrection. They didn't understand God's overwhelming capacity to extend grace. Knowing all of this, Christ invited them to his table. And they didn't understand that the body God dwelt in that, and the b- blood running through it would actually die and would be actually raised in just a matter of few days. But later they would. We don't need to understand it all now. Somehow God would become flesh and blood person. Somehow our salvation is worked out through this person's willingness to dwell with us, even knowing he would face death on the cross. But there are things we can see plainly. Jesus loved deeply and gave his own life from beginning to end, and new beginning after that for the people he called his own. He washed their feet, and he asked them to do the same for each other. He shared his bread and wine, and he asked them to remember him. With his last hours, he begged them to love. And they didn't understand yet, but later they would. 
They would heal ailing bodies and feed the hungry and share the good news of their Savior. And 2,000 years later, we gather here in this chosen family that we love. We tell the story of that night and we remember. We break the bread and share the wine and we give thanks for the body and blood of God with us. And we do our best to go out and serve others that they would know that we are his disciples because of our love. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From the dead he shall come to judge the Lord and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide us in the ways of justice and peace that we may tie towels around our waist as you did to serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives we encounter and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Use us to comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, to offer them hope in their troubles and bring them, Lord, the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we, your servants, may share with all your saints in, the, in your eternal reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sisters and brothers, Christ show us his love by becoming a humble servant. Let us draw near to God and confess our sin in the truth of God's spirit. Most merciful God, we confess that our spirit has not been that of Christ, where we have failed to love one another as he loves us where we have pledged loyalty to him with our lips, then betrayed, deserted, and denied him. Forgive us, we pray, and by your spirit, make us faithful in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Who is in position to condemn? Only Christ suffered and died for us, was raised from the dead and ascended on high for us, and continues to intercede for us. Believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Now I invite you to stand and share signs of peace and reconciliation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave grapes as evidenced of the promised land. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When we had turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us in him your crowning gift. Emptying himself that our joy might be full, he fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with the scorned and forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as a pledge to his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy 
and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake in the same loaf. The bread in which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The United Methodist Church, we believe in an open table. That means you don't need to be a member of this church. You don't need to be a Methodist. You come with a heart knowing that, that this is the meal that Jesus shared with his disciples to strengthen them and help them to remember. It's a meal that we share together to strengthen us and help us to remember who we are as the disciples of Christ today. We'll come at the center aisle and the pastors will be here and we'll serve the bread and the juice to you. If you need gluten-free, just let us know when you come forward then you're welcome to spend time in prayer at the altar if you'd like, or return to your seat and be in a spirit of prayer. The table has been set for you. Would you come and receive?
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.